a small group today, so we're just going to dive right on in. Um, we're recording today. It's great to see both of you back here today. Um, thanks for being here, and we're just going to get started. Um, a little bit for day two, you can take a moment to just look through the agenda. We're really going to dive in today um, to creating your own scenario. Um, my sense is because we're a smaller group, um, we will able, be able to work through things a little bit faster. Um, so we will probably end early would be my my hunch if I was a betting woman. Um, and um, there's two things you, you should note by the end of this. Um, one, if you create a scenario, um, then you will have a digital badge. Um, and so the work today will um, work to um, complete the, the scenario. And then you'll also or earn 10 um, sponsored hours of MRS um, that you can use um, for yourself in your own practice. A little bit about housekeeping. This workshop, this um, will be recorded as well, and we'll share out the recordings. Please feel free to use the chat like you did yesterday or come off Zoom. Um, come off my, your mute button if you want to share anything out loud since we are small. And if you're able to be on camera, it's just a great way to create community. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Kate, who's going to do a little bit review and get us into that guidance document for today. Uh, well, welcome back, everyone. Um, yesterday, we really kind of talked about like what MRS is about. It is definitely an innovative tool. And one of the things that we sort of briefly kind of brushed over was the fact that this is, um, there's a lot of research backing up um, MRS. One of the things um, I'd like to highlight is that when an individual goes into um, the simulator, four times for 10 minutes, they're able to generalize that particular skill that they are working on. So it is a really powerful tool and a lot of bang for your buck um, for uh, this innovative tool. We know that um, we talked a little bit about why this works. Uh, mixed reality simulation is not just computer generated. There is a sim specialist on the back end. We do not let our students and or participants know that because that sort of breaks the magic. That's something that we like to, to keep secret and, and close to the vest. Um, but it also works that human loop paradigm because each individual avatar has a very unique background story and behavioral profile. And in the guidance document, we have a list of all of our students um, and a little bit like a bio of each of them, as well as our adult avatars as well. So when you receive the guidance document, that is in the appendix D. And we have a wide variety of environments to choose from. Yesterday, you guys saw our um, elementary or early childhood setting, as well as our high school. But again, we have an upper elementary as well as a middle school. And we have courtrooms, we have fast foods, we have um, hospitals, um, we have living room settings, we have offices. Anything that you can think of, we probably have something that we're able to, to pull from. And then again, those are those three levels of behavior. Yesterday, you were introduced to that low behavior, which I like to always call as the rainbow and unicorn, where we're really just practicing um, particular skills that might be uh, new. Um, then there's the medium level, which is more the um, like your everyday sort of interaction. If it's engaging, people are nodding their head. They're not pulling out their cell phones. They're not turning and talking to their neighbor. Um, but if it is sort of um, a lesson that lacks luster, uh, you're going to see those sort of behaviors. And then that high behavior is that that area where there's real no resolution and therefore um, there it's it's sort of like how we how do we negotiate this space? Definitely for more uh, difficult conversations. And on the next slide, we're, yes, so we have the guidance document, which Jennifer is going to share with you guys via a Google, right, link. Am I correct in saying that? Okay, good. And this is sort of the end all, be all, if you will, document that will help guide you as you create your scenario. Um, it provides a wide variety of things. So it's going to help you learn what to do when you are a facilitator. 
Um, yesterday, I sort of facilitated the conversation where I introduced the scenario, so on and so forth. But there's a there's some things logistically that go along with that. It explains that. Um, we provide, um, you know, the avatar information, the bios, the level of behaviors, and what our avatars can and cannot do. Um, and then we go into scheduling logistics as well as what happens the day of the MRS session. And then we have um, our appendix that you guys will kind of get a little more, uh, you'll learn a little more about today, which is going to help you in creating your scenario. Yesterday, there's some things that we want to think about. Um, I know that some of you guys already have some scenarios that you're, you're thinking about creating or maybe that we already have one for you guys to use. But some things that we want to uh, remember is that you can always pause simulation. This is something that is so powerful. Um, we can't pause real life situations. Although as a teacher, there was quite a few times which I would like to be able to pause or rewind or try again. Um, and you can't do that in real life, but you can in the simulation. So that is something that we like to tell our participants, listen, if you see this lesson going south, or this conversation is not going the way that you want it, you can pause simulation and receive feedback immediately from your peers and or your instructor or, or facilitator. Um, you can say, you know what? I don't like the way this is going. I wanna start the simulation again. So those are some really great things to think about. We can scaffold um, our scenarios as well. Maybe the first couple of people that go into the simulator, we're going to start at a low behavior. And now that we've seen other people go and we're learning from them, we might want to think about, hmm, now we can build it up to more of that medium behavior, more of that real life situation. So again, you can utilize all of that and do all of that within those scenarios that you're creating. Another thing we'd like to talk about is what the avatars can and cannot do. So you can go, yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, they cannot answer in a, in a quarrel. So you can't say, okay, everyone say onomatopoeia. You're going to have a student say the principal doesn't allow us to do that. And that's sort of the key for the learner to be like, okay, I have to think of something else. But you can say, Dev, can you say the word onomatopoeia? Or give me a thumbs up if you can, if you know the word onomatopoeia. So then they may be able to do it that way as well. Um, they're not able to switch desk, leave the room. The only exception is Luna, which we, we learned about in our early childhood setting. Um, they can't give group thumbs up, but one can give a thumbs up. One raises their hand. And again, the more you get into the simulator and work with these avatars, they'll become sort of second nature to you. So um, they might not, for instance, um, and you guys are going to be able to talk to one of our sim specialists in a little bit. Um, again, these are trained actors. We are very fortunate. We have two great sim specialists, but, you know, they might not know what was the word Pythagorean theorem. They might need a little background on that one, for instance. So providing that information ahead of time is key. And again, we'll talk about that. Also, if you want them to like read a passage and answer questions, that passage needs to be provided in some of the materials when you create your scenario. Um, uh, you'll, Ava is in our middle school setting and she is a sassy one and she constantly likes to have her phone. So if, if you are a bore to her or she is not interested in what is going on, she will pick up her phone and like text her mom. Her, her mom's like one of her best friends. You can't say, okay, Ava, pass me over your phone. So you have to think of another way to do that. Um, and they can't hold up. The, when you enter the simulation, particularly in the upper elementary, the middle and the high school, it does look like they have a paper or iPad in front of them. They can't hold it up to show an answer. But what you can do is say, um, Savannah, What's the answer that you have? And they'll be able to tell you the answer. So there's always ways around that as well. 
So some other things we want to talk about is the um, think about how you want your learners to engage in the simulator. There is a one on one approach where you can just have one person at a time come in a simulator um, without an audience. I've done this um, when I used to teach some courses. I will say my feedback was always like, I don't know how I did. Um, so a lot of times I always recommend maybe having them go in with a partner at first and co-teach a lesson so they kind of get familiar with what the setting is. That's one way of doing it. Or like what we, what we did yesterday was that fishbowl effect. And that is a really powerful tool. Um, fishbowl is where like one person goes, there might be a two minute debrief afterwards, another person goes. And what you're going to learn is that the participants that go in the simulator, they get stronger as the time goes by because they're, they pick up things. Oh, I really like the way Kim did blah, blah, blah. Oh, I saw J JD did this and this worked really well. Or, wow, Kate went in there and did this and it did not work. I'm not going to do that. So um, it's a really good learning experience. There's benefits um, to each of these. And there's also some drawbacks to each of these. And we can discuss more what makes the most sense depending on your scenario. Um, the other thing we want to talk about is, again, 10 minutes in the simulator equals 45 minutes in real time. So let's say, for instance, you want them to teach a science lesson. Well, we know good instruction is a lesson that does not go 30 minutes, right? Um, we have a hard time sitting here right now without providing breaks. So um, we really want to hone in on what are you looking for in education, um, a lot of times we know go, good instruction is the I do, we do, you do, that sort of explicit instruction, how I'm going to introduce, I'm going to model, we're going to do it together, and now you're on your own. So honing in on maybe this lesson, I'm only going to focus in on the we do portion, where I'm going to model and get feedback and, and um, modify my instruction. The other thing that you want to consider is a sim specialist needs a 10 minute break. Now, this can be done a little differently. So, for instance, if you are doing one participant and then you break for five minutes, one participant break for five minutes, then you don't need to give them a full 10 minute break because the sim specialist is getting a break in between each participant. Another way of doing it is what we're seeing here on Appendix A, where if, you know five participants go then they receive a 10 minute break. The reason this participant schedule is really important is you saw yesterday, people aren't just gonna volunteer <laughs> to come into the simulator. They get nervous. So by having this participant guide, it is very effective. People know when they're going, they are prepared and there's no wait time because you know, ultimately, Yes, we are providing you guys with free hours, but this does typically come with a cost. So we really wanna be super effective and this is one way to do that. The next thing is getting into the scenario planning. In the appendix H, you are going to see what a scenario template looks like and what goes into creating a scenario. Um, Sort of the, when we're thinking about the continuum today, today you are going to have time to create that scenario and receive feedback from myself and Linda, who is our SIM specialist here today. And Kim and Jennifer are also pretty well versed in the, in the world of mixed reality simulation. So they're happy to, I'm sure, provide some advice. Um, you guys are going to submit your scenario to myself and we're gonna set up a meeting to kind of review um, and be like, okay, like, what do you think about this? Or this is really good. Have you also thought about X? And um, set up a time to really implement your plan. And then you are going to meet with one of our SIM specialists because not only are you going to create it, we want to ensure that that scenario is eliciting those behaviors that you want. And in order to do that, we are going to kind of run through a dry run, if you will, of that scenario. So that way, any questions that our SIM specialist may have about like, how do you want this, this particular avatar to feel? 
or what is the goal of this you know, what are the outcomes of this scenario that we can tweak it there to ensure that we are getting those specific skills that you um, that you want out of your scenario? So in the scenario template, there's a couple of things that um, are must haves. So um, do they have the guidance document in front of them right now? You all have the guidance document in front of you. There's a link in the chat, in the Zoom chat. Perfect. So um, within here, we're going to, um, you'll see, let's, if we scroll to Appendix H, and then ultimately we'll give you a fill-in one. So this is just so you guys can kind of see what it might look like. And that is on page 30. So um you were asked for like what is the outcome so like overall a brief overview of what you want the learner and the um avatars to experience during the scenario so that's sort of like overall like what is the goal the other thing we want to think about are like what strategies do you want to elicit so i'm doing a behavior you know um scenario what are some strategies that I want to see my learner do? You know, do I want them to use positive language, asset base? Are we going to talk about, you know, are, are we going to, how are we going to introduce the rules? Whatever specific strategies, we want that there. Because again, that helps the SIM specialist know, okay, this scenario is going on the right track. Therefore, um, you know, our student avatars will probably act this way. Now, if they're not seeing those strategies being elicited by the learner, then maybe they're going to act another way. Then we have the scenario overview, and that is what we call our student-friendly or learner-friendly facing vignette. So that is what, when you enter the simulation yesterday, for instance, you saw it was just a, you are a substitute teacher in, in Miss you know, Schultz's kindergarten class. Your goals are to greet, to you know, get to know each other and blah, blah, blah. Those are the things that we put in the chat. So that is in its simplest form, what your learner is going to do and all the information that they need about the scenario will be in that front facing. Um, because the scenario design template is what we call the back facing. This is what helps our SIM specialist know what to do, how to feel. But that front one, that scenario overview is what your learner is going to receive. They don't need to know all the other stuff. Then we have um, just like, what does this simulation look like? So are we doing early childhood? Are we doing a high school setting? Do you need an office setting? Are we working, um, uh, you know, we've, we've had some that work with adults that have learning disabilities. And so they're doing a job interview at a fast food place or um, we have a supermarket. So whatever sort of environment that you want, ideally we'll go there. Maybe you want um, a female and a male avatar. Maybe you want them of different, you know, a certain ethnicity. All of that goes in to this ideal simulation configuration. So we can create that build for you. And then, you know, what level do you want? That low, medium, and high? Or maybe you want the first couple of uh, goes to be a low, and then you want to increase to a medium, you would indicate it there as well. And then um, who is your audience as well? So are, is this for pre-service teachers, in-service teachers? Is this for higher ed faculty? Are these for district leaders? You would put that in that there as well. So this, yesterday, we didn't actually get to meet our middle school um, or elementary setting, but the heart map is a, the way that we get to meet the students at that middle and upper elementary level. So here, this is just an example of what, it, what um, one scenario design template looks like, again, based on like what we did yesterday. So for the learner to facilitate an engaging activity to help to get to know the students, they can use a heart map, at, heart map activity or expand. So some of the strategies that we wanted to see yesterday when we did these meet the students is we wanted engaging strategies. We wanted first person and asset-based language. We wanted them 
to ask questions. Um, we wanted people to affirm their culture, their religion, family, and sort of um, really get to know them and integrate them on that personal level. So again, that scenario overview is what you guys received with the, with the learner that's entering the simulation experience. So it says you are a substitute teacher filling in for Miss Hill, who is out on family leave. The student's homework assignment from last night was to create a heart map to share with the class. The heart map activity is a way for students to illustrate, I should say, or write about people, activities, or things that are important to them. And so I, our deal configuration was elementary ed. We wanted it a low behavior since it's the first time there you guys are experiencing it. We wanted the elementary uh, avatars. Um, and then this learner audience, we can do for all sorts. So all of them are listed. And then the supplementary material is something that you might need to supply our SIM specialist. And so a teacher can create their own heart map to share. So they might want to submit it. So yes, I, you know, I could hold it up this way, but it makes a lot more sense for our SIM specialist to be able to pull it up on a separate screen and really be able to see it. So that is what that means by supplementary material. Those are materials that our SIM specialists are going to be able to need to see um, to make that experience a little more engaging and more realistic. All right. So then if um, within this H, you'll see on page 31, these are potential perspectives. So here is the real meat and potatoes of when we're creating a scenario. We want to know how are they going to feel? How might they react? What might their point of view be? So um, if we go to the next slide, um, it just talks about like, you might want to put some key words or phrases in there. So for instance, if you're really trying to elicit a skill, we do this a lot when we're talking about really complex um, scenarios, if you will. You can go to the next side, Kim, it's fine. Um, so it's keywords or phrases that might trigger a specific um, reaction um, from the learner. So here is an example. So Savannah, remember we talked about a little bit about her yesterday. She's super shy. So a lot of times she will not answer the question on the first try. Um, she's not going to just, you know, shout out an answer. So only when it's asked to. So Dev is enthusiastic. He's always willing to go first. He's relaxed and friendly. So here we really kind of get into their personalities and some things that they might do. And this is where our awesome SIM specialists really get that information in order to improv and create that human in the loop paradigm that makes this experience feel so real. So this is where a lot of the brain power comes in when creating those scenarios. So I just did a lot of talking very quickly. So we're going to just give you guys a, if you want a five minute break or you just want to power through, it's completely up to you guys. Yes. I guess if I can ask a question in my break. Um, so this program has a cost. Um, mm -hmm. how, would, how would like a consultant go about purchasing this program and being able to use it with schools that they're working with? You would come through us. So we are, so we own a site license. So the software is called Immersion. It's a tech company out of um, California. We have a site license or you can work directly with Immersion. But I'm going to tell you this, we actually have a partnership with Immersion. So unless you have, they will send you to us unless you already have about 40,000 just to, just to, then they'll be like, okay, we'll, we'll create a partnership. Otherwise they partner with us and other, we, we have a site license. So we, we, you know, pay money and we're able to provide this at any time to anyone. So even if you want to purchase one hour, right? So going rate might be $150, let's say, um, we, you could just purchase one hour. Immersion, 
they they work with let, let me tell you some of their partners google starbucks so they're working with big companies right. with deep pockets we know education we don't have those deep pockets right so what i love about branchette is they realize this is a really um powerful innovative tool and so if you are part of our core community we sponsor a lot of ours and or we also work with a lot of external partners jennifer i don't know offhand 10 maybe currently right now maybe more where they will partner with us and buy hours like in a bank so if they want you know two hours here five hours there you know we'll just deduct it from their bank of hours if you will so that's why it's really cool to be a part of this workshop you automatically get 10 hours for free which you know is is a is nice so you can utilize it with ever so if you if you're like hey i want this district to use it um you would contact me and we would talk about like, what are you looking for? Do I need to create a scenario? Do we have a scenario? Do we want to create one together? We talk about a cost. We'll talk about if there's a potential to be able to sponsor. Because again, Branch Ed's goal is that this is accessible to everyone. And we, they, you know, what I love about, um, you know, us is that we're, we, we really do try to make this as, accessible um, as possible. So I'm gonna ask this last question. So I've noticed that the avatars come pre-programmed. No. With, so their behavior can change based off of my conduct. Mm -hmm. Yes, because and if you remember they're not pre-programmed, our SIM specialist puppeteers and talks for them. So they are not pre-programmed. That's the difference between mixed reality simulation and virtual or AR. That's all computer generated. It is, so we have Linda here. She's our sim specialist. Her real name is Katie. She has a voice modulator and she has a controller and she manipulates and talks for the avatars. And that's why those potential, like how do they feel? She needs to, she studies that and learns that before going into the simulator. That's the difference. Love it. Yeah, I know that, and that's what, and that's, so that's why you'll notice anytime you enter a simulation, our, and students, avatars, uh, will always comment on something. So they'll be they'll be like, oh, I like your, you know, your kids painting in the background or Jennifer, you got new glasses today? Because that's like, whoa, because when you do that, they realize, wait a minute, this is not computer generated. There's something else here. So I guess with, with their behaviors, like when, with uh, if their kids want to be shy. So some dudes can pull that shyness out of a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen them use that magic to do that. If the, and and I know it's, I guess what I'm trying to say is if that's happening, if teachers exercising that gift, would the simulation simulation uh, kind of recognize that and okay? And that is why that's why we say um, if you if we want to go back to uh, on the scenario template, it's on page thirty. It says strategies, best practices to consider. You would write that on there. You would write when a, when a, you know, when a teacher uses strategy or has the with it skills or what, you know, blah, 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 then Savannah will engage. And, and that's the great thing about like, honestly, you have to hire really good sim specialists. And we are very lucky that we have two. They get that they've improv. And also a little background on our sim specialist is they also have dabbled in like Katie, you were, or Linda, sorry, Linda, you do have some teaching background. Like what, what did you do again? I remember when we yeah, hired Yeah, I, yeah, I work as a teaching artist, uh, as like one of my other jobs. I teach theater, acting, and improv. And then I worked in daycare for a couple of years. Um, so I have a lot of experience with like that infant through five-year-old age range. 
So when we were looking for a SIM specialist, that was like, yes, we want someone that can act 100%, right? Then can do improv, but it's also better, you know, and, you know, to have somebody that does have background and or some sort of teaching experience. Now, Kanisha, our other SIM specialist does not have necessarily um, a teaching background, but she has now been, I've worked with her in my previous institution as well. So she has done hundreds, I mean, hundreds of simulations when it comes to education. So she knows, she, you, and you can tell good teaching. You, I mean, and so they, that is all incorporated, which again is why I'm such a proponent of mixed reality simulation versus just the AI computer is gonna spit it back at you. Okay. All right. Um, do we want to just keep going? Because I think since we have a sub smaller group, we can kind of knock through this, but it's up to you guys. I'm good. All right. Okay. Well, then we'll keep going, Kim. So in this next section, um, we are going to actually talk, if you guys have any questions for Linda, our SIM specialist, that is what she is here to do, because the rest of the time we are going to create, um, we're going to create uh, your scenario. So uh, Linda is here to answer any kind of questions that you may have. What I think might be a good idea is since it is your turn to create, we are going to drop in um, a fillable, right, since um, scenario. PDF. And if you guys just kind of want to give us like a quick idea of like what you're thinking about, the rest of this time is really so you guys can create it. We can answer any questions that you may have and um, we can we can get this this thing rolling. JD, it looks like okay. you're having a good time. So I guess you're asking us, do we have an idea of what we want to look at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go with a real life experience that I had as a principal that a teacher had to address. So I don't even know how touchy it is. But anyway, we had a middle school student who was transitioning. Um, she was once a female student. And she was transitioning uh, to a male student where she used all male pronouns. Um, but at times, she would wear female wigs and she would wear a skirt. Um, and as much as it was confusing for the teacher, uh, of course, just imagine the confusion for that particular kid. And so the kid was just, and so we had to just create an environment that it was, you know, conducive for her to, for her or him, whichever one she chose that particular day, to grow. At the same time, provide instruction, math, science, reading, social studies. So um, it was a very tough situation for the teacher to be involved in because she was ultra conservative. She mm -hmm. believed that, of course, the child should only be a girl, uh, or if she was going to be a boy, she to pick and pick one day and which is, hey, this is what I want right now. Um, so that's a thought I'm thinking about because those are those sensitive subjects we deal with here in the South that I think um, we could use some, some support on. So I wanted to bring to your attention, um, in our high school setting, we have Jordan. And Jordan is quiet in class, but talk, talkative with friends. Jordan loves to read and write. They may write and doodle in class when not engaged. In class, Jordan makes strong connections with materials related to historical or literary content. Socially, Jordan is close to Angela, their friend, and their mother, who has been very supportive of them coming out as non-binary. Jordan works part-time at a local coffee shop, and while uh, they do not like to, the work. The people there are open-minded and make the work fun. So we actually do have an avatar um, that comes across, it's non-binary. So that might be something that you want to think of. Now, we don't necessarily have that in our um, other bios here but we could make that happen. So I think that kind of goes with your, I think, previous question, where maybe Yasmin 
you might want a younger child to indicate that. So although this, she does go by, you know, her, she, we could change that for your particular scenario. We would just have to be explicit when it came to your uh, avatar, you know, potential perspectives, if you will. But I did just want to show you that we already do have an avatar that might fit your particular need. And so you don't already have to build it. And so maybe it's having, a, you know, and that's the other thing, maybe it's having a conversation. Um, maybe we create an avatar that, it, or a simulation that's having just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jordan. Because you can do one-on-one -on -one or you could do it in the setting. Um, but Jordan will not come out and say that. It has to be that that building that relationship to talk about it. But again, you can build a scenario where you're like, no, Jordan's more open about that. Or you can, in your scenario, Jordan is not open about that. You have, how do we build that relationship for Jordan to open up? I got you. JD or Kim, do you guys want to give us a little background about what you might want to do? Um, I was thinking about maybe a scenario where, and you may already have this, where there's a assignment, maybe particularly a reader, reading assignment where the kids didn't do it? Or what did you do if they didn't do the homework? What, what does the teacher do to continue the lesson that was important? And that could be in any of the content areas, but I don't know, you may have a scenario already like that one, where how do we keep going if you assigned homework and they didn't do it? You know, I don't actually, I don't have one. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Now I, I have that one that I shared yesterday that was more of the, the college level student mm -hmm. that, you know, didn't do an assignment um and 30 and 35 worth 35% of the grade, but I do not have one at the uh early the elementary ed level. Well I'm I'm not thinking elementary. I'm because uh, I'm mainly secondary. I mean I do elementary I do teach the reading so courses. Yep. But yeah, yeah I'm thinking Mm -mm, I don't already have one. So that wouldn't be a good one to create. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. How does, I want to see what the teacher can, the teacher candidates can do about the language. What do you do? Do you stop? Do you keep going? And I, I want some of them to have done the homework and some didn't because sometimes that's the scenario in the classroom. Yep. And that's perfect. And that's again, in that potential, you know, perspective, you will say, you know, Deb has always done his homework, blah, blah, blah. He might have forgotten Savannah, you know, or uh, Savannah might had a late volleyball game and volleyball is way more important to her. So, you know what? She's like, whatever. I don't need to do it. They're not going to hold me back. So you can kind of create that perspective. And that's what you would write in there. OK. J.D., did you want to share? Yeah, so something similar to that is I work with uh, pre-service and in-service teachers working with language learners, and sometimes there's the uh, development for the students socially and in their uh, language skills where they can speak to each other about common subjects, about their weekend and things. But when it comes to academic subjects, it's where they don't have the language or the vocabulary. And you're talking about the English language learner? Yes. So I'm going to share with you this one. So here we have David, who's from Cambodia, and she's on OWIDA level three. And she thrives with a combination of auditory and visual learning and is most comfortable working independently. She can struggle when the language exceeds the gap or she doesn't understand like cultural nuances and she appreciates a patient approach, the use of visual aids like flashcards, charts, graphic organizers and puzzles and her hobbies include music, volleyball and art. So when you are creating your scenario, you might wanna think about putting David into your, into your build. So when you're asking for a specific avatar. Now she is in a middle school setting per se, but I'll be honest, we've used it to where, um, we've used it where 
that middle school, you can either, it can, you can make them look like they're maybe fourth graders. So it could be that elementary, they can be that met, middle, but they also can pass for that ninth grade. So that's why I really like that middle school setting part. Cause you really can gauge that one. You can kind of do whatever, but I don't think they look any older than ninth grade, but they do definitely fit that middle school. And I think you can go that fourth and fifth. So that's why they put the special population within that middle school setting, because that is one that can kind of kind of go either way. So at this time, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to start writing in your scenario. And we are here to help. So if you um, you guys can go on 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 mute off camera. But if you want to come back on or you want to discuss, we will be here. Um, to answer any kind of questions that you may have on your particular scenario. And then um, we will, if we want to start, maybe we can work for about 20 minutes. Kim, does that work? And we can kind of come back and discuss, but we will be here. So we'll stay on camera um, and answer any questions you have. We also have um, Linda, aka Katie here, she can, she's going to stay on for about another 20 minutes as well, and we can kind of work together to, um, to answer any questions that you may have, but you are going to use that fillable PDF, which is... Kate, this is it, correct? It is, yep. And you will start, yep, you'll start filling those two sections out. And again, we are here this is like a working time to give you guys some time. And when you submit your scenario, we we will um, create a time to meet just to kind of go over it and then um, meet with the SIM specialist to practice. And then we'll go ahead and, and uh, book your, however you guys want to use this. Um, any questions? Okay. And those 10 hours can be used like now. In the summer, I think we'll we'll give it like a or in the fall in your fall classes as well. So just to let you know. I want to comment that 10 hours is extremely valuable. That is all the our three presenters yesterday, that's what they were given for this semester mm -hmm. and, and for last fall. And they've had such amazing results with those 10 hours. If it sounds like a small number, it's really not. Yeah, no, 10 hours is like more than I would think I would get in my normal when I was a professor. The other thing, this is a great opportunity for research as well. Um, and I'm happy to talk more about like how that how that might look just to, within your setting. But this is a great way to publish. The other thing is you get authorship. If you are creating your own scenario. When we have it in our bank and somebody else wants to use it, you are credited with authorship. So if they use it or they publish or disseminate, they have to utilize your name and provide the authorship as well. So this can be a creative works when it comes to like a publication, for instance, on your CV. And again, I'm happy to share how that might look. All right, so we're here for you guys. Um, and so we're just going to wrap up and then um, please use the rest of this time to, to finish out um, your scenario. Um, here are next steps. Um, so please submit the scenario. Kate's put her email in the chat um, so you can submit it directly to Kate via email. Um, once you do that, you'll be able to schedule a meeting to review the scenario with Kate. Um, and then you'll be able to practice the scenario with the SIM specialist again. That time is really so the SIM specialist um, has all the information they need to be able to um, use the avatars in a way that you, you would like to see in your scenario. Um, you'll be able to pilot the scenario as well. And we're hoping to do all of this by Wednesday, May 3rd. So that is when um, please um, share those scenarios with Kate via email. As a reminder, when you do that, um, once she reviews it, there will be a digital badge. So a digital badge um, that you can post on your social media, um, think LinkedIn, 
um, or any of your social media platforms, you can also post it in your email signature. And so it's a nice way for folks to know you know something about MRS. So when folks have questions about mixed reality simulation, they're going to come to you. Um, and it's also a way to just acknowledge um, the time that you spent here today in working on your scenario and learning more about this innovative um, platform in a way that teacher candidates and new teachers um, and everyone really can practice and hone in on their, their craft. Um, so please be in touch again um, Wednesday, May 3rd. I will put that in my follow-up email as well to all of you, but just so you um, might want to put that in your calendar now if you have not yet finalized um, your scenario. And with that, one more thing, we would love your feedback. We know this was two days and um, a couple hours worth of your time. And so we would just love your feedback in um, order to learn more about your experiences today and yesterday. Uh, if you can take this five minute survey now, you can use the QR code on the screen. Um, we can also put a URL um, in the chat. Um, and so we would just love your feedback. Um, on, on today's workshop and yesterday. So think about both days um, from the workshop to fill out that survey. So if we'll you give you a moment. Putting, yes. I'm sorry, if you don't mind putting it in the chat. Um, yesterday, yes. it would never come up for me when I took a picture. I was like, man, they think I've already submitted it. And I'm I, sorry I, about that. Let me grab it. It's it it my, my internet connection here. And I get it for It you. should be in the chat now. Oh, you don't see okay. it. Thank you, Kim. Thanks for being here today. We look forward to reading your final scenario and uh, have a great day. You too. Thanks. Bye. Are we good? That's what we're yeah, I see two results. So thank you, Cameron. Have a great day. It's been great learning thank with you. you.